No. Now let's look at a question out here, okay? The class interval is given, okay? In this type of a question, the group data is given. The last question that you had done with me in that the group data was not given, okay? So here, the class interval and the frequency is already given to us in the question. So it is a 20 to 25 and it goes all the way to 50. So 25 to 30, 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45 and we need to do one more 45 to 50. Okay, so these are the these are the class intervals, and then the frequency we do not need to find out in this type of question that right now it is at 30, at 24, a 52, a 28, a 46, and a 10. Okay, now on the x-axis. On the x-axis, we have our class interval. Okay? So, so Jugar must be coming in. Hi, Jugar. How are you? How is Dhanana? Dadi, kaisi hai? I hope, I hope you are taking good care of her. She will become better. She will. Okay, so we are doing the same one, Jugar. We are at the same question, okay? The uh, histogram one, and then, then go to line graphs and all, okay? Now, this is the x-axis. On the x-axis, we have the class intervals, and on the y-axis, we have the frequency. So now, now on the y-axis we like this. Okay. Ah. So we start off there zero. Okay. Oh, oh. So this will be a zero. Now now we put a kink out here. Why? Because five, ten, fifteen, we are not going to put. We are going to start off straight away at twenty. The next block is 25. I made this, I made these dotted lines, okay, Naira, so that you know, I know where the actual I need to plot it. And this what happens is, no scale on our, this one. So I will not be able to plot exact graphs. So this is the 40, okay, 45, and the 50. Check if I've missed anything. Okay, and here it is going all the way from 10 to 52. So we will take a gap of 10 feet. 10 here, 20, 40, 50, and a 60. Okay, so this is like that. Now, 20 to 25 is a 30. So what we need to draw is we need to do the angle between 20 to 25, okay? So we need to make a rectangle, okay? This from here, all the way to 30, okay? The first one like this, and then 25 to 30 is 24. So we will come here, 24 will be less than half. So we have our 24. And then 32, 35 is a 52. So the next one, 30 to 35, okay. 52 goes all the way here and here. 
Then the next one is a 35 to 40. That is a 28. So we go all the way here. Okay, what was it? 28. So it comes all the way here. And then it is a 46. So we go from here to 46. Here. Yeah. Then we have our 45 to 50 is just a 10. So we have the 10 out here. Okay. Yeah. So this is how this took Okay. So I'm giving you all one question. Okay. Both of you there with me? Okay, so giving you, uh, giving both of you a question to do. Now, the class interval. So, the class interval is the first thing that is given and then the frequency. Now, in this question, the class interval is 600 to 6. And goes all the way to 840. So there is a gap of 48. So this will be 66. We say it comes at 720, from 720 to 760, 760 to 800, and 800 to 840. And the frequency goes from First one is 80, the second one is 45, the third one is 153, the, oh man, this is good, 88, and then 171, and 63, okay, so go ahead and make it, and like I said, I'm also making it. We can check our answer. It's okay. It's okay. Calls and all would be coming right now. So, this is our, got it now. This is our y axis, and then we need to go to the x axis. So let's make the x-axis out here. This is basically, you know, we should we should be using what? Graph paper to plot it, okay? Out here right now, we are just doing it on a sheet of paper, but it is always easier and advisable to do it on a graph paper. And then let's have the dashes and dots so that it is easier for me to plot. So we have it like that. Now, now on the x-axis, we have 0, and then it goes up to 5, then a 10, then a 15, then a 20, and then a 25. Okay, exact. So the first one is a 0. 0 to 5 is a 0, so no worries about that. 5 to 10 is a 3. So we have it out here as... 3, 4, 11, 2. So, yeah. Perfect. 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 So, even if we make it like this, a 5, a 10, and a 15 gap out here. So, the next one would be what? We would have it as, okay, so, this is 5 to 10 is a 3. So it will be a little more than half out here. So a little more than half. Okay. So this comes to our three. Then the next one goes all the way to 14. So just below the 15. So here the second one comes. The third one is still 11. So we will go all the way from here. Okay. 
and to 11 that would be a little higher than our 10. So this becomes the next one and the last one is 2. 2 would come here very close to the zero line. So 2 would be here. So this is the type of graph that is formed. Okay. So check. Gaibana. Okay, so we have we have now we are doing coordinate geometry. So the vertical line, the vertical line stands for the y axis. Okay, and the horizontal line, the horizontal line that goes through it is known as the x axis. So this is the x axis, and the one that I'm changing the color is the y axis. Okay. The point where it cuts, the point where it cuts, this is known as the origin and the value is always at a zero. This part, the right hand side of the horizontal line is known as positive x and the left hand is known as the negative x. When we go over, it is the positive y and this here it is the negative y. Okay. So let's let's put the dotted line so that it becomes you know easily understandable for us what are we doing. So shape outline. Let me increase the width a little bit so that we can see it clearly. Okay, so here. So now if this is the point, let's say this is okay. Here we will write like a number line, the positive one, positive two, positive three. Okay, and it keeps on going like this, positive 5, positive 6, positive 7, and a positive 8. Now, on the other side, other side, it would be go in the negative. The negative 1, the negative 2, the negative 3, the negative 4, and the negative 5. Okay, Upar pe, why did I say it is a positive y? Now, what we have done is we have flipped the number line and the positives go up here and the negatives come here okay so that is why that is why this is known as a coordinate geometry now let's look at why the name coordinate coordinate is made up of two things one it is made up of the value of x and the other it is made up of the value of y the value of x is also known as abscissa and the value of y is also known as the ordinate. Okay. So let's say if we have a point here. Okay. Now this point has the x value which we always write first whenever we are writing the coordinate. The x value is written first and then the y value is written. So the value of x, if you look at this point, is 2. And the value of y, we can see out here, is 1. So, and if I have something, let's say, here. Now, if you look at it, what is the value of x? What is the value of x, guys? A negative 2. And the value of y is what? A positive 2. If we take if we take this as the point, okay, you can see that x is a negative three and y is a negative two. So x is a negative three, y is a negative two. If we take this as the point out here, so if we look at it, the x is a six. And the y is a negative 4. So if we have to define this point, then we write it as 6, comma negative 4. Okay. Now this quadrant of ours, this quadrant of ours is known as the first quadrant. And then we go anti-clockwise. This would be known as the second quadrant. 
this would be known as the third quadrant. Why is it known as a quadrant? Because it is divided into four equal parts. So this is our fourth quadrant. Now you can see in the first quadrant, the value of x and y will both be positive always. In the second quadrant, the value of x is negative, but the value of y is positive. In the third quadrant, the value of x is also negative and the value of y is also negative. And in the fourth quadrant, the value of x becomes positive and y remains as negative. So this is the basic of coordinate geometry, okay, wherein you know you can actually define, you can plot, okay, okay, what are the points and how are the points and what kind of things it is there. That is how graphs are plotted, okay, graphs are basically plotted according to our coordinate geometry only. In statistics also, if you look at it, it was a part of coordinate geometry. We had to plot the points of the rectangle. Okay, so this is this is how it is. Now let's say I am saying this as point A. So now you all define what is the value of point A. Anyone of you, either Jagar or Naira, what is the value of point A? Yeah, but five and two. Okay, what is the value of this point B, 3 and negative 1, perfect. What is the value of this point, C? Oh, perfect, okay, so negative 2, negative 3. And what is the value of this point? Negative 4 and a 4, okay, now. So this is clear, okay? And if I say this is this is my point E, so what would be my value of point E? Exactly. The origin is always 0, 0. Now, two more things that we need to remember. On x-axis, okay, if the question says that the point is on x-axis, the value of y is always equals to 0. So basically, it becomes x comma 0 whenever we are writing the point. So if I take this as the point, okay, f, so what will be the value of point f? x ka value is how much? x is a 5. See, it is on 5. But y is a 0. y is a 0. Okay. If I, if I take this point as EFG, so this point G, what would be its value? Exactly. Okay. So these points are on the x-axis. And the last thing that you should know in this is on y-axis, on y-axis, x is always equal to 0. Yaniki, the value that we'll get is 0, comma y. So if this is the point h, okay, so how would we define this point? Exactly, 0, comma negative 3. And, and if we take this point as i, then this would become 0, comma perfect. Okay, so this is this is this is the basics of coordinates. In the next class, we will do a lot of questions on this. Okay, so let's call it a day for today. Both of you take rest. Okay.